Hi, Kimberly. This is Margie. I wanted to respond to your post. Um, when I was reading your post, the first thing that came to my mind was the scripture that talks about to raise a child in the way that they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. Now, the there's a from birth until till they go old, grow old. There's a lot that can happen, as you know, between that time. Um, another thing that came to my mind is I'm reading this article about men and addiction, and um, in this particular article, most of the men were raised. Matter of fact, all the men. There were like 26 of them in this um, focus group, and they were in recovery. And all of them said that they had a religious background. All of them said that they had a religious background. They don't know when and how and what reason they went astray, but even when they were in their active using, they said that they still realized that God was with them. They knew that um, they knew they were doing wrong, but the addiction had just gotten hold of them. But even with that, they did not say that there was no God. They just said that they they had departed from God. And once they decided to um, get into recovery, they said that their spirituality and their religious background really helped them because it gave them strength and hope. And then in some cases, it even gave them peace. One of the things that I really liked in your post when you said you had chosen to speak out because many others are hiding under the veil of shame, um, th that I am just so glad that you're speaking out. I do a substance abuse group, and every once in a while, I will have the uh, participants take a... Um, um, it's, it's a callback feedback from family and friends, and they give it to their parents and their friends. And um, I was surprised at the number of loved ones, support people who really had a lot to say about that person's addiction. And I think that if people would give family and friends a time to say something um, publicly, that that would really help them. I know that um, when I do substance abuse counseling, uh, in the olden days, most of the people who were running the groups were people who were in recovery, and that's fine. But I think some people need to run the groups, too, who are not in recovery. People should run the groups who are loved ones, family and friends of those folks who were addicted, because they, too, have a lot to say. They, um, The addicted person, I don't, under, I don't think that they understand... Even in recovery, the amount of heartache and, heartache and pain that they put their family and friends to. The main thing is for both folks to have a voice, the addicted person and the family of the addicted person. Um, at my church, we have a, um, this is before the pandemic, we had um, a support group where the addicted people would come together and they, I think they met like once a month uh, and they would just talk about different issues. They also attended AA meetings, like you said, and the, the Al-Anon Al -Anon meetings are really good meetings too because I think that people, they think that they help, the loved ones think, and think that they are helping the addicted person when in fact they are enabling the addicted person. So I just commend you on speaking out and just continue to speak out. Bless you.